Presbyterians are part of the broader Protestant branch of Christianity. So in this video, I'm going to tell you what we have in common with other Protestants, but not necessarily all other Christians. Hey guys, welcome back to Kingdom Craft, where I build this really big church in Minecraft while I talk about Christianity. So today, specifically, I'm going to be talking about Protestantism and how Presbyterians fit into it. So now, unlike Catholicism, unlike Eastern Orthodoxy, Protestantism is not one united church. It's not one united thing at all. And there's basically nothing that unites all Protestants, since Protestantism is not an organization. It was just a movement away from Roman Catholicism. So there's nothing that all Protestants really believe, or almost nothing, but there is something that the original Protestants believed, and Presbyterian is definite Presbyterians are definitely more historic versions of Protestants, along with, you know, Lutherans and Anglicans, whereas people like Pentecostals or non denominationals are more more modern developments. So yeah, I, can, I can't tell you what all Protestants believe, but I can tell you what the original beliefs of the Protestant Reformation were. So uh, I can't tell you what all of it is, but a pretty good summary is called the five solas of the Reformation. Sola is Latin for only or alone, and basically these five, these five points are faith alone, grace alone, Christ alone, scripture alone, and uh, the glory of God alone. So we would say that it's, um, you might say, okay, if it's alone, if it's just one thing, why are there five of them? Well, no, we say we're saved by grace alone, through faith alone, in Christ alone, according to scripture alone, for the glory of God alone. And I'm going to go through each of them. So in Latin, that is sola gratia, sola fide, solus Christus, sola scriptura, and soli deo gloria. So the first one, sola gratia, uh, grace alone, we're saved by grace alone, is that salvation is a free gift of God. There's nothing we can do to earn it. Now, in the early church, there was a controversy between St. Augustine and uh, Pelagius. Pelagius was this guy who said, basically, in some sense, we can earn our salvation. Man is not totally dead in sin. Man could, man can basically save himself by being good enough. And um, Christianity as a whole, and specifically Protestantism, says that, you know, we, we cannot save ourselves, we are dead in sin, and that we need God's grace. Now, it's not that Roman Catholics taught that we could earn our salvation. They've never taught that. Some Protestants think Catholics say we can earn our salvation. That's not what they say. But they did make it very complicated, so good works did contribute in some way to salvation. So Protestants wanted to make very clear, no, it's by grace alone. Every aspect of salvation is a free gift of God. There's nothing we contribute to it. So yeah, that's the first sola, sola gratia, salvation by grace alone. The second one is similar to it, it's sola fide, salvation by faith alone, or, or through faith alone. And it, it's basically faith as opposed to good works. A lot of people think, you know, if you do good works, you'll go to heaven. If you do bad things, you'll go to hell. And that's not what we think, because if we were judged on our works, we would all go to hell, because none of us are good enough. So, um... Sola fide, faith alone, means that it's only our faith in Christ that contributes to our salvation. Our good works do not contribute to our salvation in any way. Now, good works are still very important. Some Catholics think, oh, Protestants think all you need to do is believe. You don't need to do good works. No, you do need to do good works, but the good works aren't what contributes to your salvation. Um... It's always important to make distinctions when you're talking about theology. So we make the distinction between salvation and sanctification. Salvation is basically us being declared righteous in God's sight because of Christ's righteousness, which is basically imputed to us. I'm going to talk about that in a little bit. Um, so salvation is where we're, tran we're transferred from a state of judgment in God's eyes to a state of acceptance and we're permitted to enter the kingdom of heaven. That is salvation. Sanctification is where God actually does make us more holy, more righteous, and better. God making us more like what he wants us to be as humans. So we, we would say that good works do contribute to our sanctification. 
like sanctification is one of those really long words that doesn't need to be long at all. Like sanctus is Latin for holy, so sanctification is the process of us being made more holy. And we believe that sanctification is still not something we do by ourselves. It's something that God does in us. Once we are saved by believing in Christ, the Holy Spirit sanctifies us by making us more holy and conforming us to the image of Christ because Christ is the ideal human and we are to be like Christ. So yeah, that is sanctification and our good works absolutely do play a part in our sanctification, but not our salvation. So it's not that Catholics believe we can earn our salvation. Catholics just don't make as good of a distinction as Protestants do between salvation and sanctification. They tend to sort of mush the two together. And um, the Reformation was trying to say, no, it is not our good works that contribute to our salvation in any way. And um, that's what's great about Christianity, that we do not have to earn anything because there's no way we possibly can. Christ sacrificed himself for us as the only perfect sacrifice because he's truly God, truly man, so that um, we are declared righteous because of Christ's righteousness, not because of our own. There's another distinction between imputed righteousness and infused righteousness. So imputed righteousness is more of a legal declaration. It's God judging us according to Christ's righteousness, not according to our own. It's like if you failed a test, but right before you turned it in, or you, you, you did very bad on a test, but right before you turned it in, some really smart kids said, hey, I'll swap my test with yours. So the teacher graded you according to that really smart kid's test instead of your own. That's basically what Christ did for us. So God is still going to punish every sin, but God is going to punish um, Christ for our sins, and God is going to reward, reward us for Christ's righteousness. And that's something that Christ willingly did for us. Remember, Jesus has the same will as the Father, or at least uh, Jesus' divine will is the same will as the Father, so it's not something he was forced to do, it's something he willingly did. Um, so that's imputed righteousness. Infused righteousness is something different. Infused righteousness is God actually making us more righteous, not just declaring us righteous. Um, so the disagreement between Protestants and Catholics is not over whether salvation is by faith or by faith plus works, as some people have made it out to be. It's whether salvation is by only imputed righteousness or a mix of imputed and infused righteousness. And Protestants do believe in infused righteousness too, but we would say that just contributes to sanctification, not to salvation. The differences in terms of our beliefs on salvation which is called our soteriology, um, the differences between Catholics and Protestants often get exaggerated. It's not like there aren't important differences. There definitely are. But a lot of people think the differences are bigger than they really are. So yeah, I've only gotten to, to two of the solas. i got to go faster. The third one is pretty straightforward. Solus Christus, in Christ alone. That's basically, we're saved by Christ. We're not saved by anything else. We're not saved by any other spirit. We're not saved by... Um, we're not saved by Mary or the saints. Now, it's not that Catholics believed we are saved by Mary or by the saints, but Catholics did cause Mary and the saints to play too big of a role in um, the life of a believer, where they would have people praying to Mary and the saints. Not, not praying as in worshiping, more like praying as in asking them to pray for them. But still, Protestants still thought like it could lead to people... May, either consciously or subconsciously trusting in Mary or the saints for salvation. So that's why we say Christ alone. Now, Catholics wouldn't disagree with Christ alone, but it's more of a, a, a shift in emphasis rather than a shift in belief. And, and there are differences in beliefs. Like, you know, Protestants almost never would approve of um, trying to communicate with Mary or the saints in any way. Um, so yeah, I'm, I'm trying really hard to not misrepresent Catholicism when I, when I critique it. Uh... So yeah, the fourth is sola scriptura, which means according to scripture alone. Now, a lot of modern Protestants misunderstand this. So um, basically the Catholic Church had their own teachings as the one true and only way to interpret scripture. So they were basically putting their own teachings on the same level of authority as scripture. Because uh, all Christians believe, I mean at least all traditional Christians believe, that scripture is infallible. Scripture can never be wrong because it's the very word of God. 
God did speak through men, so it's in the words of men, but it still is the word of God. Now, Catholics agree that Scripture can never be wrong. So, they, so Protestants and Catholics agree Scripture is an infallible authority, but Catholics also would say, so would you know Eastern Orthodox and Oriental Orthodox, that the Church can be, in some circumstances, an infallible authority, and Protestants would say, no, only Scripture is our infallible authority. Now, where some Protestants have gotten this wrong is they think the Bible is the only authority, period. And that's not what we believe. We believe the church and church tradition does have authority, but it's not our ultimate infallible authority. It is authority, but it's a lesser authority. It's authority that's subordinate to Scripture. So I, we, do, we Presbyterians do think that we need creeds and confessions to interpret Scripture properly. We, when we're interpreting the Bible, we need to rely on the wisdom of those who came before us. There are a lot of churches today that are structured like, hey, it's just Pastor Bob and his Bible. Um, no, we, we don't think it can be like that. You, we cannot interpret scripture completely independently. We do need to rely on traditions and other things. But the thing is, they're not infallible. So we need to be informed by them, but the only scripture is our ultimate authority. So when the Catholic Church teaches something that was completely not found anywhere in scripture, like purgatory, we would say that, um, yeah, um, we, we have to get rid of this because it's not in scripture. But there are a lot of things that we inherited from the Catholic Church, like, um, our, like the Athanasian Creed, for example, which is a very good description of the Trinity. And we, we, we do keep that because that does line up with scripture, and it's a very good way to interpret scripture. So we do keep things like that. So the last one is, it's not very controversial, but I would say, of all Protestants even, Presbyterians in particular stress this more than anyone else. It's called soli deo gloria, for the glory of God alone. And that's basically um, the central, um, the reason why we do, our, why we worship God is not for us, but it's for God. It's to glorify God. Because it's not that God needs us, God does not need anything, but it is objectively good to glorify God, to give glory to God. And that is why we do what we do. We think everything we do, our worship, and even our daily lives, should be done to the glory of God. Now, one of my favorite things ever is that Johann Sebastian Bach, who was the smartest human who ever walked this earth, not just, I'm not talking about smartest artist, I'm saying smartest person, period. Johann Sebastian Bach, absolute genius, brilliant Baroque composer. He was a very devout Christian. He was a Lutheran, and Lutherans are one of the original Protestants. And at the bottom of all of his pieces, he would write Soli Deo Gloria because he believed that he was writing for the glory of God. And I think Johann Sebastian Bach really did glorify God in his music more than anyone else because, look, it, I, I do study music and... Like, there's basically a consensus among musicians that Bach was the greatest composer ever. Like, better than Beethoven and Mozart. He's just on a whole new level. So, I, I mean, I'm a, I'm a bit biased, but because uh, I'm a particular fan of Bach. But you know what I mean. The point is that soli deo gloria means everything we do is for the glory of God. There's another Protestant phrase called corum deo. That means before the Lord, and that means every aspect of our lives is to be lived for the Lord, for God, not simply our worship. We're not living for God one day a week on Sunday. We're living for God every day of the week. So yeah, those are basically the five solas of the Protestant Reformation. Presbyterians believe them, but so do Lutherans, Anglicans, Baptists, and most other traditional Protestants. So that's about it for this video. So now um, enjoy this speed up of me finally, hopefully, finishing the floor of my church.